In a previous video, we demonstrated how to make a basic pie chart in Excel and talked about how they're useful. But what a pie chart can't easily do is give you information on how the overall dataset compares to another dataset. One way to get around this is to create special comparative pie charts where the total size of the pie is proportional to the sum of all the data it is showing, allowing you to see comparisons between datasets and the categories within them at the same time. To start with, we'll just compare two small sets of data from different years. I already have two generic pie charts showing the data. See our previous video on pie charts to see how to get to this stage. Note that for comparative pie charts, we recommend that you do not use a legend and instead have category names appear on the pie itself in the form of data labels, which we also explained in our previous video. Now the objective is to make the size of the pie in the second chart represent the total for its data set relative to the first. This is what is known as a comparative pie chart, and unfortunately it isn't something Excel can do by default. So to achieve this goal, we'll use a bit of custom computer code using Excel's VBA programming language, also known as a macro. That may seem daunting, but we've already written the code for you. You'll be able to find it in the description to this video located underneath the player on the YouTube watch page and in the downloadable example spreadsheet linked in that description. But first, we need to do a few preparations. First, I need to give names to the two totals, calling the first total 2013 and the second total 2014. Now I give names to my two charts, calling the first chart 2013 and the second chart chart 2014. Note that all these names don't have spaces in them, specifically because it's easier to work with names that are all one word when it comes to VBA. Note that the regular naming method doesn't always work for charts, in which case you can use the name box in the layout tab of the ribbon instead. With the names set up, I'm ready to add in my code. Press Alt and F11 to bring up the VBA window. From the Insert menu at the top, click on Module. This gives us a new space in which to put VBA code. Now I simply paste the code into this space. So what does this code do? Well, in simple terms, the first part establishes all the names we've chosen. The second part stores how big the first chart is in the computer's memory through temporary variables. The third part selects the second chart and makes it the same size as the first to start with. And the final part scales up the second chart according to the ratio of the totals in each dataset. If you want to give your totals or charts different names, you'll need to change the names being used in the code too by replacing the definitions of the name variables at the top. Now the code is in the spreadsheet, I just hit the play button at the top of the screen while the cursor is somewhere in my code and Excel will execute it. Back in the spreadsheet, we can now see the second chart has been scaled up to reflect the higher 2014 total, giving us more information through the chart comparison than was possible originally. If I change the data and need to run the macro again, I can either press Alt and F11 to get the code window open again and reuse the play button method, or I can see the macros in my spreadsheet through the macros button in the view tab. I select the name of the macro I want and click run to execute it. So with this, I can resize my pie whenever the data sets change. Overall, I now have two pie charts that I can present separately from the total sales data that not only tell me the split of sales in the year, but the total performance as well, overcoming one of the major downsides of using pie charts for comparisons. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Check the links in the description and on screen to reach the Excel tips page on our website with more tricks to try and a downloadable version of the file I've been showing you with the VBA macro already set up. Be sure to like and comment the video if it helped and subscribe to our channel for more access, Excel and VBA tips. Thanks for watching.